Hi, I'm Marion Landry, Technical Marketing Manager for 3ds Max Design and Showcase. As part of the tips and tricks on rendering with Mentalray, we'll review the Simplified Mentalray Rendering Panel. The Simplified Mentalray Rendering Panel is basically designed to reduce the learning curve for new users. So this is the panel that I'm talking about. In here, you'll find shortcuts of basically the settings that you would find in the full rendering setup window. Basically, it was designed to accelerate the test render by globally increasing or decreasing the precision settings. So these are the precision settings right here. But what exactly these settings are affecting could be a little bit abstract. Let me help you understand what these settings are affecting. The first precision that you will be dealing with is the image precision or anti-aliasing. Now, by increasing the anti-aliasing, you will find that the edge of your objects is a lot more refined. Whereas if you decrease the anti-aliasing, you'll start to see some denting action here. So some dents and it starts to be really fuzzy. Now, decreasing the anti-aliasing will obviously render faster, will give you lower quality, and increasing the quality will give you nice, smooth edges and can also help uh, with objects such as railings or thin wire or stripes uh, on material bumps and stuff like that. Now, the second one we'll look at is the soft shadow precision. What happened is that when you increase this, it starts to say two time, four time, eight time the quality. So what exactly does that mean is that if you look under, for example, the mental ray sky portal and the shadow precision, it says here shadow sample 16. Now, if I go two time, which is a higher quality, it basically increased the shadow precision on a global level. So all the mental ray sky portal are, will now be 32 sample instead of 16. It won't change the actual setting of the mental ray sky portal, but it will change these settings globally. It would also increase the shadow precision on the daylight system, for example, whereas by default, the softness sample is set to eight, while by two time, it would now be 16. So it would affect as well the artificial light settings that you have. So by increasing the soft shadow precision, globally, you are affecting the soft shadow sample of each of the elements, either artificial light, mental ray sky portal, or daylight system in your scene. Now, what exactly this looks like in the software, if you increase the quality, you'll see that the shadows are nice and smooth. Whereas if you're decreasing the quality, the shadow starts to be a lot more grainy, as you can see in these images. Obviously, decreasing the soft shadow precision will render faster. Increasing the soft shadow precision will take longer to calculate. But depending on your image, you might need higher or lower precision quality. Now, similarly for the glossy reflection and glossy refraction, what happened when I increase or decrease these precision slider is that on the material level, you'll see here I have a material with glossy sample of eight. Now, if I'm using a precision of 0.25, now my glossy sample is only worth two. So it won't change it at the material level. So if I open this material, I won't see that this number change but it will change it globally for each material in my scene. Now, the same thing would happen for the glossy refraction. Let's say I'm using a draft version, which is 0.1. Well, the glossy sample would now be 0.1 instead of being eight. Now, these slider affect each material in your scene that do have glossy sample for, for reflection and refraction. Now, what this looks like in a software, for example, for the glossy reflection at a high quality, you could see that my glossy reflection is nice and smooth, where if I decrease the reflection precision, you see that my glossy reflection is starts to have a little bit of noise in it. Now, on the big scheme of things, you know, a lot of time you'll get away with a lower glossy reflection precision because 
the, the reflection is not something that you pay attention to much. It's there to support your image, but it's not the main focus of your image for most case scenario. For the glossy refraction, what it does increase is basically the softness of this glossy refraction. So if it's a really low precision, the glass seems to be um, a pure glass, not frosted. It doesn't have this nice, smooth, glossy refraction. Whereas if you increase the quality of this glossy refraction, suddenly it looks like it's a frosted glass and it's got this nice and smooth refraction happening in the glass. Now for the final gather precision slider, if I change the draft low, medium or high, in order to understand this, let me just bring you to render setup panel under the indirect illumination tab. Basically by moving the slider, I have the same slider here and it doesn't matter where I change it, it's going to get affected at the uh, boat in both windows. And you see that these number, the, init the initial final gather point density, the ray per final gather point, and the interpolate over the number final gather point are being affected depending on the quality that I am choosing for my final gather precision. So in summary, the simplified mental ray rendering panel is basically where you will toggle in between quality versus speed it will globally increase or decrease the precision setting of your rendering or your materials. So basically the main question you need to ask yourself is, do you need to increase or decrease the quality of the glossy reflection and refraction on the material level or globally on your scene? Do you need to fine tune the final gather precision settings yourself by entering your numbers or increase and decrease the global final gather precision? How about the anti-aliasing? Do I want something high or low? So basically, the Simplify Mental Ray Rendering panel will allow you a shortcut to either decrease or increase the quality of your rendering to reach either speed or quality depending on what you need.